UFC 306, aka UFC Noche, was mid as now the actual production value and the quasi love letter to mexico was out of this world absolutely amazing whoever produced this definitely needs an oscar or an emmy because this definitely helped save the card even watching at home it made you feel like you were there it was the first ever ufc event broadcasted in 1080p which is out of this world and in some few thousand seats at the arena there was haptic seats for those who purchased them and it was the first live audio in spanish so you could hear it in spanish commentating there were new octagon girls even all latina women really doing a great job of telling the story of mexican martial arts and combat sports new venom fight kits which i thought were out of this world for this event and it provided real-time stats if you were live at the sphere i'm talking about the actual fights itself it started off with raul rosas jr aka the chai we we god whatever that means he won via decision and out of the other prelim fights on the card only two ended in a finish one ignacio bajamondez won by tko and the other was caitlin salza submitting her opponent and aside from that came a viral cut from irene aldana which i don't know how she's survived and with the distance in that fight but it just shows her toughness then he moved to the main card where it was a snooze fest, a decision fest. Ronaldo Rodriguez won via decision, Ode Osborne, I don't know why he overpromised because he delivered an absolute stinker. Then probably the greatest fight of the year, if not one of my top 10 favorite fights of all time took place between Daniel Zuhaber and Esteban Robovich. And like I said, it was fight of the year, fight of the night definitely. And after that, it was just a total dump taken by the fights that you wanted to pay for the most to see. Diego Lopez versus B to the Ryan Ortega fought and literally the first punch that was landed by Diego Lopez stunned Brian Ortega and had he just kept the fight on the feet he would have won non-stop no complaints about anything but no he decided to beat Brian Ortega at his game by trying to finish him via submission and it ended up being a decision victory for diego lopez i like diego he's one of my favorite fighters of today i'm not mad at it but hey it doesn't matter we got two title fights coming up between valentina shevchenko and alexa grasso which once again ended in a decision valentina shevchenko all she did was take alexa down and do absolutely nothing i don't know how you could call her a champion or one of the best of all time when she, her game plan was literally take her down and hold her down she landed no offense on top whatsoever all the while alexa grasso was going for submission after submission credit to her for not giving up but literally if you look at after the fight alexa didn't have a mark on her face and just a horrible way to begin a crazy yet beautiful night when you have the first title fight ending like that then we get to the main event sean o'malley sugary sean o'malley versus marab the decision machine duavis philly versus marab the slob versus sean the extension cord o'malley now this fight was very reminiscent to Bilal Muhammad versus Leon Edwards. Aside from the controversy at the very beginning of the fight where Sean O'Malley's coach Tim Welch was yelling at Marab, cornering him like he was his own fighter and Marab took very deep offense to it as would any other fighter, that was mainly the highlight of the fight. Other than that, it looked like an extreme walk in the park for Marab because he was taunting Sean O'Malley in each and every single round. All he did was take Sean down held him down at times, didn't really land some significant strikes on the ground, and it just led to him winning three rounds easily. Sean did hurt him at the very end of the fight, but I think Sean was just too gassed to go in for the kill and try and get a finish. And nonetheless, he won fair and square, no robbery whatsoever, but it was in a very boring way. Even Kendrick Lamar made it an appearance to the fight. How crazy was that? Dana White was so mad at this card fight-wise, he said, hopefully new fans turned off the TV before the co-main event and they're big fans now. But in the end, they made their goal, making this the highest grossing event in UFC history with the attendance of 16,024. The gate was 21.8 million. In the end, I think the UFC is just in a rut trying to look for new superstars. With this card being Mexican Independence Day weekend, the perfect people to have on this card, like I mentioned in my last video, was Yaya Rodriguez and Brandon Moreno, who was actually there at the event. And I just think they're trying to force other superstars upon us, like Alex Pajeda, who I don't think is a superstar, like Ilya Taporia, who's trying so hard to be the Latinx Conor McGregor, he just can't do it whatsoever. We are just in this weird spot where we're lacking star power, and this past Saturday night definitely showed that.